sometimes we have to climb a mountain to hear what God has to say to us. So come, climb this mountain with me so that we can learn more about what God has to say to us, about God's blessing for us, and how we can be a blessing for others. Matthew 5, 4. In Jesus' time, people believed mountains were holy and special places to be with God, maybe because they reach up high into the sky. Jesus told them about God's kingdom on this mountain. You can think of a kingdom as the way the world works or is set up. In God's kingdom, there is abundance more than enough honor, food, money, love, power, and resources for every child of God to thrive. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 4, we read that Jesus says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. There were people in Jesus' time, just like today, who were taught that Crying was a shameful thing to do, that it showed weakness and was too vulnerable. Many of the rich and powerful people spent their time trying not to cry, so they focused on gathering money to control and control to feel strong and unshakable. In this promise, Jesus speaks to people who mourn, people who are sad, and people who cry, and he praises them. Why do you think he did this? I bet everyone listening here has cried before. I know I have. Why do you think people cry? Crying shows that we are alive, awake, aware. Crying shows that we are brave. Because crying shows that we are willing to feel pain, our own pain, and sometimes someone else's pain. You're not trying to block the pain around you or keep your distance from it. Tears and crying are important, especially when what makes us cry is painful or hard to hold. It's also a beautiful way that we connect with God. Did you know that God cries too? And that Jesus cried during his time on earth. God cries for everyone. God's heart is wide and holds all the pain of everyone hurting throughout the whole world. And when we cry, it's a way of sharing in God's heart. Jesus promises here that God will comfort us when we cry. And Jesus promised God would bring comfort and make things right for all the people listening who couldn't provide for their needs no matter how hard they tried. We're told that they didn't belong because of who they are or what they've done and struggled because of the way the world is set up to harm them, which caused them to cry and to grieve. One way God brings comfort is through you. 
I invite you to hold your hands out with your palms facing up. When you offer your hand or, or loving words, especially to someone who is sad, you are God's comfort to that person. Crying together and being vulnerable always helps us belong with each other and it brings us close to God. Hey there, I am so glad I get to be with you today. Before we transition to our next activity, I would like to bless you. A blessing is something that you receive, so open up your hands like you are ready to receive a gift right now. And I'm gonna speak a blessing over you. If you receive it, take that blessing and put it in your heart, okay? So hear this blessing. May God bless you when you laugh and when you cry. God understands all of your feelings. Now we're going to wonder a little bit about what Jesus says to us about this blessing. So take out your coloring sheet that an adult in your house probably printed off for you and, and use some markers or crayons or whatever else you have in, in, in this sheet while we think about the following questions. And here they are. First one, think about a time when you cried. What happened? How did you feel after you cried? Sometimes we feel tired or sometimes we feel relieved. Ooh, sometimes we feel a lot of other things too. So how did you feel? And number three, how can you be God's comfort to someone this week? Now it's time for your activity. To do this activity, you need a blank piece of paper or, or a sheet that an adult printed out for you. And you will also need markers and crayons or something else to write with. Have you ever received a card in the mail? How did you feel? How do you comfort a friend who is sad? Some people send messages or cards to encourage their friends when they're sad. And so to make a card, I want you to fold your piece of paper. On the front of the card, you can write, when you are feeling sad, remember. On the inside of the card, I want you to write your own words of comfort. Some ideas are, God hears your prayers, or everyone feels sad sometimes, or someday you will feel better, or I'm always here for you. And when you're done with this, I want you to mail your card to someone or drop your card off to someone who you think needs some encouragement. Take time and finish this activity. It'll mean so much to someone. Our time together this week has come to a close. And before we go, will you pray with me? And this prayer time is a short ritual that helps us create a sense of community together, even though you are there and, and I am here. And so I'm grateful for this ritual with you. Will you pray with me? Comforting God, thank you for our tears and how they teach us and free us and connect us to you. Thank you for holding the pain that makes us cry and for crying with us. Please use us to be your comfort to someone else this week. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us and I cannot wait to see you next week, friend.